Hello and welcome back to another podcast and video from Fantasy Football Scout on UCL Fantasy. Please do make sure you subscribe and like this stream. Follow me on X at underscore fantasy ed. How did you do in match day one of UCL Fantasy? We're going to be reviewing that match day, looking ahead to match day two, best picks, things like that. Things we need to know as we get ready to pick our teams for match day two. I am going to have a team reveal that comes out Sunday slash Monday as well. So look out for that. But for now, make sure you've liked you've subscribed we're going to get going in a second but I just want to say if you want more UCL fantasy content please do subscribe to the UEFA fantasy podcast which is an audio podcast I'm on with two other co-hosts loads of episodes on there really really great fun the link will be in the description below and make sure as well you've joined the scout mini league go on there and if you want some written stuff fantasyfootballscout.co.uk of course as always has plenty of stuff you can look at for UCL Fantasy, also FPL, and all, all sorts of fantasy games. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that housekeeping. Let's get going and review match day one and preview match day two. So yes, you'll see, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my match day one. In the past, when I've had good ranks, and I've had quite a few good ranks, I haven't normally started this well. Um, I mean, it helps that a lot of people obviously captain Kane. So I got 110 points. If you're listening on podcasts, I got 110 points. I'm 61,000 in the world, 61K. After match day one, really, really happy with that. There's over a million people playing. So really, really pleased. I'll just read out my team in case you're listening on podcast. So I ended up, the players that ended up on the pitch getting me points. Harry Kane captain for 42 points. Incredible, right? Absolutely amazing. What dreams are made of. Um, the only uh, downside, I suppose, is so many people captained him. But anyway, uh, Harry Kane, Gaio Keres, who I went on and on about in 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 uh, in my preview video, he got he scored, got nine points, fantastic, and double up because in midfield I had Goncalves as well. I went for the double up in the end, and he got an assist, uh, so he got seven points. Yamal was my only Barcelona player, and he scored. He was the only scorer for them, so that was eight points. Oscar Glock did nothing for me, two points, but I'm keeping him. You didn't have him really for the first game. You had him for, for the subsequent games because you can just hold him. He's a cheap player. He's got a few decent games coming up, so I'm hoping he returns at least once or maybe twice over the next few game weeks. Jacob Ramsey, nine points for me. Absolutely. Just completely out of the bag. Now, I did say to in the in the match preview that a tactic I have used for, for a long time, and, and I continue to, is the teams we see... Uh, and, and in this instance, for match day one, before the deadline, we saw Aston Villa's team, right? They were playing, I think it was Young Boys, wasn't it? Um, they were. They saw their team and I saw Jacob Ramsey was starting. And a lot of people have gone Morgan Rogers at this price point, which is £5 million. I saw Jacob Ramsey and Morgan Rog Rogers at this point hadn't done anything FPL. Everyone had been bigging him up. I know we got two, two assists just recently in the last FPL uh, game uh, match day, game week. Uh, but Jacob Ramsey was there and I picked him. I picked him as a punt, a complete punt. I knew he was starting. I went for it and lo and behold, he scores and gets me nine points. Absolutely incredible. Lots of people calling me lucky. Of course it was luck, but there was a bit of calculated you know, stuff there. I, I knew that Jacob Ramsey was a goal threat. I know he hasn't had the best kind of 12 months, but before that, it was properly highly rated, one of the kind of up-and-coming players. So went for it and it worked. So there you go. In mid in defence, uh, Grimaldo, unbelievable, right? I talked about Grimaldo in my preview, 12 points for me. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Emre Chan spoke about him. I said he was a lock because he was on penalties. Well, he didn't get a penalty, but he did get an assist. He ended up with 10 points. Absolutely incredible again. Trent Alexander-Arnold got six because he got an assist. Fantastic. Ferland Mendy on three points there and Blaswich in goal for two points. The most annoying thing was the players on the bench there. Di Gregorio, the uh, Juventus keeper who conceded, I think, in the 92nd minute or something to lose his clean sheet, gutting. Uh, Bellingham did play and he ended up with Bellingham, but he came off with a blank at two points. Happy to have him though. So, so he's there. Bogard for Aston Villa. He was another one that I picked at the last minute because he was starting. He was 4 million. I had a 4 million slot to fill. He came off at half time. So he only got one point. Annoying. And then Haaland, of course, um, two points on the bench. So super happy um, with uh, 110 points. Super happy with the team. Very comfortable with where it is. The, the, the regret you'll see if you're watching YouTube, I've got a new little um, graphic above my head of my rank, 110 points. Match day one score. Oh, it's the wrong way around, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'll fix that for next time. But my rank isn't 110 points. My rank is 61,825. Match day one score, 110 points. Highest match day one player, Harry Kane. I mean, that's going to be the same for so many people this week, isn't it? My biggest regret is Florian Wirtz. He got 18 points, I think, for Bayer Leverkusen. And I didn't really... I might have mentioned him on my preview. I can't remember. But after I filmed my preview, there was a lot of momentum towards Wirtz because he'd had such a good 
um, start the season for, for Leverkusen and it became clear he was going to start and not get rested or anything. And I really, really, it was between him and Bellingham for me, that slot. And I ended up going with Bellingham, um, which long term, you know, might be a good decision. But if I had him, obviously Verts 18 points would have really taken me up into the top, probably three, four thousand in the game uh, this week. Um, yeah, I mean, the players on the pitch, the only two that didn't return for me, three, sorry, was the keeper plus which Mendy, who got three points and Glock, who got two. Um, biggest regret, so Florian Verts. And then my match day prediction, so match day two prediction, but I'll come on to that in a minute. So super, super happy with what I've, what I've done for match day one. Super happy with where the team is for match day two. And actually, if if we just go here on to... Um, what might I want to go on to? I want to go on to uh, my team. I want to go... Uh, how do I do this? Oh, it's because I'm on match day one, aren't I? There you go. So match day two. So here's my team for match day two currently. And it's set up in the right order and stuff, right? So I've got... Let's go on by date, first of all. So on the... Uh, now, remember, match day one was over three days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it was a unique game week where we got three chances at a captain. And uh, we didn't even need it in the end because Kane obviously got a crazy score uh, straight away. So didn't even need them. This week and subsequent weeks I've learnt uh, are all over two. So back to kind of normal, traditional two match day, two 24-hour periods over a match day. It's Tuesday and Wednesday this time. So on the 1st, which is Tuesday the 1st of October, I have playing Haaland and Gaia Kerridge up front. Lamine Yamal, captain, 1st of October, as Barcelona are playing young boys at home. Goncalves is playing uh, at the moment, by the way, I haven't made any transfers yet, but Goncalves is in midfield on the Tuesday. Oscar Glock is on the Tuesday. Emre Chan's on the Tuesday. Grimaldo's on the Tuesday. And Blaswich is on the Tuesday. To come on or to play on the second, uh, that is the Wednesday, Jacob Ramsey. I need to discuss what I'm going to do with that. Hopefully he starts, but I'm not going to be able to see the team. Trent Alexander-Arnold, Ferland Mendy, Harry Kane, Bellingham, Bogard again, another one, and then Di Gregorio to come off the bench. So I'm I'm pretty look, if I'd already made my transfers and this was the team I had to play, I wouldn't be that, you know, worried about anything. Um I've got good captaincy option on the first, I've got a really good captaincy option too on the second, Bellingham and Kane. Um so so it would be fine. However, I obviously have two free transfers, and actually, I've actually got uh I left two and a half million in the bank. You'll see there. Two and a half million in the bank, two free transfers. Because the my initial plan was, but things always change, don't they? You make all these plans for, I'm going to do this in match day four, this in match day five, this. But you always, you, you know, things always change. But my initial plan was, okay, what I'm going to do for match day two, because by, uh, Barcelona have a really, really good fixture in match day two at home against um, uh, young boys. I need Lewandowski. And he scored again, by the way. I think he's got seven goals in seven games in La Liga this season. So I thought, okay, this is what I was originally going to do. I was going to take Harry Kane out, put Lewandowski in, right? So that gives me three and a half million now in the bank. And then I was going to take out Goncalves and what a lot of people would do this week, put in Salah, right? Because Salah at home against Bologna, right? And then I'll have for at home uh, at Anfield against Bologna, I'll bo have both Salah and Trent, the players kind of you want. And maybe, maybe Luis Diaz is the one you want now, given his form. But, you know, the, the traditional ones you want. So that's what I was going to do. And that's the exact... I've got the exact money to do that, right? You can see money remaining zero, free transfer zero. So that would give me... Um, in fact, if I now go date... the There's a couple of issues. A couple of issues with that. Well, is, are there issues? I don't know. But first of all, it means all my strikers are playing on the first. Is that an issue? Well, if they all blank, it's a bit annoying. I'm going to have to leave one. Um but you probably have to leave some blanks anyway. That would be a real disaster. I mean, let's have a look. Haaland has, uh, sorry, fixture opponent. Haaland has um, Sovia Bratislava away, but will he, will he play? I guess that's good that he's on the first day because is he going to get a rest? I don't know. Gaia Keres has PSV away and Lewandowski, as I said, got young boys at home. So three good fixtures. But anyway, let's go back to the date. If I did this, then those two transfers I brought in will be my captains. It's always pleasing when you can do that, right? Use a free transfer and it's going to be your captain. So Lewandowski would be my captain on the Tuesday and Mo Salah would be my captain on the Wednesday. Or if, or if, if I'm feeling spicy, uh, Trent would be my captain, but I, I'm not, you know, I'm happy with where I've started. I need to do what's normal. So Salah, uh, captain on, on the second. So I'm that was what I was going to do. And that is quite possibly what I'm still going to do. Okay, so... The other, the other thing I've been thinking is, right, Harry Kane, I was thinking take him out for Villa away because he's got his next two are Villa away and Barcelona away. 
And then he's got Benfica at home, which of course is, you know, he could is a good fixture for them. But then it's PSG at home. Okay, we don't know what that's going to be like. Shakhtar away. So I was thinking Villa away. I, I said it in the preview. Villa's going to be Villa, Villa, Villa Park is going to be absolutely bouncing. It's their first game back in the Champions, uh, first day in the Champions League, first game back in European Cup uh, that they'd been in the pool. Of course, they've won it. Um, first game back, it's going to be absolutely bouncing. Are, are Villa just going to have? Are, are Villa going to batter them? You know, like um, Newcastle battered PSG in their first game back because the atmosphere was. I was there. The atmosphere was incredible. We just overwhelmed them. Is that going to happen here? But then Harry Kane scores, uh, however many goals. How many goals was it in the end? Was it four or five? Four. Let's have a look. Hang on, I just need to remind myself here. Oh, 9-2. Yeah, four four goals scored. He got a, uh, one ball, we got nothing, but player of the match as well. So crazy, right? So I have got to remember, though, were two of them penalties or were three of them penalties or something stupid? Like, I mean, it was obviously a massive win for them, but playing Dynamo Zagreb at home is very, very different to playing Aston Villa away. We know how good Aston Villa are now. So anyway, so that's my question. Do I keep Harry Kane? And if I keep him this week, I'll have to keep him the next week really as well. So it's Villa away and Barca away. And if I do that, well, how can I... I need to still get Salah in. Because I've got to have Salah, right? I can't I can't take that risk. I cannot take that risk. Unless, I mean, unless I was feeling, you know, as I say, spicy. And I thought, let's get Luis Diaz, who's seven and a half million, you can see there. Only 10% owned. But is he going to start? Again, we don't know. Um, so I've got a few options. As I said, two and a half million in the bank, two frees. Haven't quite decided yet. The other options, I guess, are if you go um, strikers, right? So I'm not really bothered about getting a Real Madrid player. And by the way, if you've got Mbappe, he's injured, right? He's not going to, apparently, he's not going to play the next game. If you've got Rodri and you haven't heard, he's out for the season, so get rid of him, right? So you need to make sure you've, you're up to date on, on, on injuries and stuff. The striker to get this week is Lewandowski. So is there a way I can get Lewandowski and Salah without getting rid of Kane? Well, potentially, is there? So if I went Gaia Keresh, take him out, I leave Goncalves in, so I've still got sporting cover. I bring in Lewandowski. Hmm, this is the problem, it doesn't work, because Bellingham would be the player I took out for um, Salah, but he's 9 million, I've only got 0.5 in the bank. So if I take Bellingham out, Salah's 10. So... Really, if I want to have Salah, which I do, I'm going to have to, well, if I take out Haaland, thinking he's going to be benched or something. Mm, I need to have a fiddle. Anyway, you can see the issues I've got. I wonder how your team's doing. Please leave uh, link uh, um, questions in the in the comments. Please leave uh, your teams and your questions and your dilemmas and what you're thinking of doing. Is there any players we've got to get for match day two? If you look above me on YouTube, you can see my match day two prediction. And this is going to be something I do each week where I predict a player that's going under the radar who I think is going to do well. Now, obviously, if it was just the player I think is going to get a really big score, I could say something obvious, Lewandowski, Yamal, Salah, Trent, right? But I'm going to go Marcus Turam. Marcus Turam into Milan. Now, look, I don't think I'm going to end up with Marcus Turam. Not because I don't think he's going to do well, but just because he doesn't fit into what I'm doing at the moment. So if you get into, look at Marcus Turam. He is a... Um, He's a forward, he's seven and a half million, so he could come in for Guy Keres, a straight swap for me. And Inter Milan have uh, Svena Svesta at home. Um, and then they've got Young Boys away, so the next two. Then they've got Arsenal at home, right? But the next two are decent. Obviously, they had Man City, which wasn't a great fixture, which is why no one was really talking about Inter Milan assets. But now they've got Svena Svesta, or however you pronounce that. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, by the way. I uh, had a lot of people in the, in the comments talking about my pronunciation, but anyway. Um... Yeah, I think he's had a really good start to the season. He's, I think he's got uh, four off. He's, he's outscored every other striker into Milan. I know because I play Serie A fantasy and I've had him and he's done pretty well. So he, he he is my prediction, by the way. So I'll cut this. If it goes well, I'll cut this up and maybe post it on Twitter. If it goes badly, I'll delete it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Let's look at the, just before we finish, let's look. I am going to be back, by the way, with my, what I end up doing, my match day team reveal and everything on Sunday or Monday. Quick video so you can watch that and make sure, you know, we've got everything that we need to know. But match day two, let's look at the actual fixtures. So we've got here, look, this is the, the, the question when you're looking for, we obviously only get two free transfers between each match day. So what you're looking for in the next match day is just what fixtures stand out. You've only got two to bring in, unless you're using a wild card or something. Where, which fixtures stand out to, to, to make a move to bring someone in? So the ones here, I mean, Salzburg, Brest, no. Stuttgart, Sparta, Prague, no. Leverkusen, Milan, not really. They could cancel each other out. Inter Milan, Karena Svezda. As I said, yes, that one does stand out. Um, Marcus Turam, what are their defenders? Um, 
Barella or someone, one of their midfielders, you know, I doubt you'd do that. But th there's options there, okay? Borussia Dortmund at home against Celtic. There's one, okay? So Borussia Dortmund at home. I know Celtic won their first game, but Celtic away from home in the Champions League are historically not very good. And Borussia Dortmund should blow them away. So is there an option there to bring in? I mean, one of the top scorers in match day one, if you notice, was the Englishman. Uh, what's his name again? Gittens. Something Gittens. I really should know this. Byro Gittens or something. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get absolutely slated for that. But anyway, he scored. I think he scored two. Uh, slate me all you want. I don't really care. Um, Barcelona Young Boys is, is the obvious one. And that was in my in my mind, you know, before I made my match day one team was let's bring in Lewandowski for this. Right. So I've got two attackers for Barcelona. Arsenal PSG. No, not really, because anything could happen there. I mean, uh, Odegaard's out for them. Um, I think I think uh, it sounds like Raya is going to be back. But anyway, it, still, PSG could do something there. So that, that's not too exciting. PSV Sporting. I mean, I've got two sporting players at the moment. I'll probably still have one become deadline. So I've got that coloured. Well, might PSV beat them? Maybe. But anyway, doesn't, you know, scream that it's interesting. Bratislava against Man City. Obviously does. Man City should blow them away, even though they're away from home. But I just worry about what team is going to play here. And we're not going to see the lineups. You know, is this a game where, <clears throat> you know, Haaland's rested? Um, is this a game where, I don't know, any, you know, Edison doesn't play in goal or, you know, whatever. I just a bit worried. Obviously, the only City player I've actually got is is Haaland. I'm not going to sell Haaland, I don't think. I'm just going to risk. Because it's match day one. Uh, sorry, because it's the first day of the match day. I can I can risk him, put him up front. If he doesn't play, then I'll just sub him out. But it does worry me. If you, If I had triple City, like some people do, Never have Triple City in this game. Don't trust Pep. Uh, and then on the Wednesday, <clears throat> let's see what games stick out. Shakhtar, Atlanta. No, not really. I mean, Atalanta, I'd expect to win, but pff. Girona, Feyenoord. No, they could cancel each other out. Leipzig, Juventus. No, they could cancel each other out. Liverpool, Bologna. Yes. And I've already got, I've already said, I've already got Trent and I'm ho Salah is my main objective to bring in and captain this week. Dynamo, um, uh, Zagreb, um, a team that lost 9-2 against Bayern uh, but they're at home now against Monaco they, they'll be thinking we need to get a result but it's not a fixture that stands out Lille Real Madrid no not really Real Madrid are not convincing um, you know they weren't convincing in the first game they're not really that convincing in the league even though they are you know Barcelona I think are four points ahead of them now um, so anything could happen there Villa Bayern Munich again could cancel each other out could go either way Sturm Graz Club Bruges and Benfica Atletico Madrid so nothing really the three games that stand out Liverpool Bologna um Borussia Dortmund, Celtic, and Inter, Krenes, Vesda, and obviously Man City. But I've I've caveated that with the with the who knows who's going to play. So so look, those are what you need. That's what you need to be thinking about. Um, you know, if you've had a really bad match day and you're considering wild carding, then then you know I really wouldn't just just stick with. And I'm sure no one's doing that. But just just to say, if you're considering limitless, I think some people were saying maybe limitless in match day two or was it three? Um, Obviously, I've said I'm not limitless until match day eight. It makes perfect sense for me to do that because you're going to get to see all the teams and you're going to know who's still got things to play for and you can really just go in on the players you want. I'm not going to be wild card until four or five. Really happy with where my team is. Really happy with my match day one score. Post your match day one score below. Make sure you've joined the... Uh, follow me on Twitter, by the way, at fantasy at underscore fantasy ed. I do a little short six or seven minute video on there each match day that I'll do in a minute post on there just to tell people everything that they need to know in a much shorter way. Um, and also make sure you subscribe to our podcast, which is in the link below and our mini league, which is in the link below. And if you need anything else, either go to fantasyfootballscout.co.uk or fantasyfootballcommunity.co.uk and find out more. Anyway, thank you very much. I'll be back with a team reveal on Sunday or Monday, something like that. But keep your eye out for that. Stick the notification bell on and do subscribe and like the stream. Thank you very much for watching.